tell me who you are. What did you do before real estate? Are you a father, husband? Do you have kids? Give us some context. So I've been in this for two years. I have, I have a wife, I have fraternal twins, uh, a boy and a girl. Before this, I used to do import export. So it was in sales as well. Um, just doing international business, like yeah. cell phone cases, like Bluetooth, power banks. That's about it. Just always sales, you know, so I was always never salary based, just commission based. And then um, when did you, what, what, what was the pivot for you, the turning point that said, gosh, I should get into real estate. Maybe I'm going to get my license. Like what, what, walk me through that. What did that, uh, how did you arrive at that and why? I actually, I lost all my money in the import export business. Um, I had about like, anyways, I had about like a lot of money, like $300,000 in inventory mm. and just things were not moving. And during that time, I even like Ubered. I even Ubered, I worked at a restaurant just to get by. Um, you know, so I, I don't really share that because it's kind of embarrassing, but it's life, right? You have to go through this to, to learn what not to do. <laughs> and while you're driving Uber, were you already licensed or was that when you decided, you know what, I wanna flip homes, I wanna start investing, I'm going to go apply for my real estate license. Or did you already have that? It was all in the, everything was happening. Okay. Everything was happening at that time. I think uh, I was waiting for my license. So then um, you got licensed and then uh, were we the first brokerage you joined? Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to join the, the case team, you know, the case team. Uh -huh. I reached out to Long Beach and, uh, I talked to Kevin, Kevin said, we're not hiring. So Jay Fig. I remember that. <laughs> you were, to the were disappointed. <laughs> How did everything kind of come together? Cause that's interesting. It went for six months, which it kind of makes sense. Now that you've been in the business, that was probably a ramp up period of nurturing. Um, but you had mentioned you've done everything from expired probates, door knocking, um, open houses during that six months, were you still just taking that shotgun approach and doing everything across the board or in the first 90 days, did you kind of figure out, you know what, open houses aren't for me. I'm going to go and do expires or how did you decide what lead gen levers you were going to focus on? You actually helped me with that. You're like, just pick three things and go hard at it. I was like, okay, I'm going to figure out what my three things are mm -hmm. and which one I like. So I chose open houses, expireds, and online leads. And then tell me about, tell us about your first deal. How did that come about? What, what, what did you do? How long did you incubate it for? And was it a buyer or a seller? The first deal was actually a sell and a buy. Okay. Oh, big, big fish straight out of the gates. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what happened with that one? I was just door knocking expireds. I was door knocking expireds and I met an agent that was selling her house, but she didn't sell it um, successfully. So she's like, I, I don't need you to sell my house. I was like, okay, do you have an open house I can help you host? Cause I'm a new agent. <laughs> I went to go host that open house. And uh, I door knocked the whole neighborhood just with the open house script. Like, hey, come to my open house, blah, blah, blah. You know anybody moving? Um, and I got her number, the seller's number. Mm -hmm. I followed up within like, I say less than three months. Mm -hmm. um, I went on the listing appointment probably twice, and I didn't get the ink. Um, I got the ink through DocuSign. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that was that was my first. They sold and they bought. So I, it was a door knock, door knock for inviting them to open house. So what, can, what, how did you stay the course? Cause six months can be a long time, especially someone who's at rock bottom. And I imagine you're still driving Uber during this time. At night, at night, yeah. <laughs> at night time. Um, how did you, how did you stay focused and committed to the process? I'm just always envisioning like, I'm going to flip homes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna develop homes. This is just a temp 
this is just temporary. You know, like you're gonna make a hundred thousand, Jordan. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. You know. So now we got a couple of deals under our belt. Do you stay the course? Are you still doing the same stuff, waiting for Realtor.com to ping you with a new email of a prospect, or? Tell me, are you, did your schedule change? Are you now, because you door knocked and you picked up a listing, did you start to gravitate towards that at a higher level? No, I, I didn't. I, I saw the RDC was bringing me results. Mm -hmm. So I, I went into to Zillow and I spent money in Zillow. Okay. Um, you know, Jin, Jin was a Zillow user. So I kind of just copied Jin. And, mm -hmm. um, Zillow was great. You know, but it's just, it's a numbers game, right? And you can't really, it gets scary when you're right. spending too much money and you're not yep. converting deals. Um, so I learned that, right? And the, there's so much learning things. I, I didn't gravitate towards sellers. I gravitated towards buyers. So RDC's kicking in, Zillow's kicking in. Are you converting with Zillow now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. You know, door knocking expired. And you're, you know, so you're still door knocking expired. Walk me through, tell us, share, what did your schedule look like now? We're, um, I'm imagining we're on eight months, eight or nine now in your first year in the business. What, what do you, can you, cause I mean, geez, that's not even that long ago. So I'm yeah. hoping you'll remember what was your day like? I mean, were you getting up at 6 a.m.? Were you getting dressed, suited, ready to go at eight? Were you in the office by 8.30? Were you making your expired calls? Walk us through what your actions were at that time. Okay, I mean, I get up at seven. I'll play with my kids for an hour because yep. you know hard to play with your kids after you get home. I'll play with them for like an hour, an hour and a half, and I'll go to work by nine. So from nine to twelve, I would just call. You know, whether whether if it's a new lead or a follow up, um, and I just keep it simple. Even till this day, I keep it simple. Just talk to twenty new people and follow up with my my twenty five to thirty leads. Right. So every day I, I got to talk to 20 new people and I got to follow up with my, my, um, my current leads and from one to, so nine, that's nine to 12, you know, so mm -hmm. about follow up is, yeah, I would finish the follow up no matter what, even at night or even in the parking lot or yep. people of neighborhoods because nine to 12 and 12 to six, I'm at appointments or showings. And if I don't have appointments or showing, of course, I'm getting back to my follow-up. Mm -hmm. Nighttime, I would do my follow-up too. Once I, once I play with the kids and have dinner, I'll just call, you know, around nine, I'll call people. So these 20 new people, are you, are you going phone? Are you calling them or are you texting? Are you DMing social media? Calling. Or calling is the best. It's, you know, it's original and it, it, you have a communication with them and they remember you. Who are these new people that you're calling? Aside from your Zillow internet leads, who else are you calling? Are you, are you, like, are you are, at this point, are you on Mojo or Red X or anything? Are you using a third party expired list that you're calling through, hand dialing? Red X, I do hand dial. And the reason why I do hand dial is uh, I call the lead three times in a row. So until they pick up, right? Um, if I feel like it's a solid lead, then I'll probably call them three times in a row for about three to five times, wow. right? So until they pick up, right? And, um, and there's some cases where the first call, I'll get the appointment. So even back then, about in your first year, were you, were you locking down expired listings? Like, did you go through a third party service? The phones, I wasn't really good. Um, uh -huh. I did a lot of door knocking expireds. I picked up, uh, my first expired listing was like a one point, like, it was like two mil, like 1.8. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not expired. What do you say? Just the Mike Ferry script. You know, Mike Ferry scripts, they're free. Yep. Right? You can Google them and it's free and it works. Yep. It's got to add your own flavor into it. And so were you strategic? Were you just going after any expired so it could take you all over town? Or were you focusing well, no, no. in specific um, areas? Wherever you live. Wherever okay. you live. Because you don't want to drive from like Hollywood and you live in Irvine, you know? <laughs> right. It's always right. fun. Because it's, it's convenient too. Like if you have to go on a showing, it's right outside your house. Boom. Right. Yeah. Right. Always farm. It's all the veterans will tell you that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. How, how good were you after each door knock and conversation? What was your system to 
keep them top of mind. Meaning, are you, were you jotting down notes and then putting it in a CRM or were you just putting them in your notebook? No, um, you know, I was really fortunate to just, just be a part of this culture. Like just meeting Jay and meeting you at the upstairs Cerritos mm -hmm. and just learning about Lion Desk. Mm -hmm. So I would get their name, email, and I would just drip on them through mm -hmm. Lion Desk. Mm -hmm. but this is just your CRM, right? But I have my hot leads, which is mm -hmm. in my notebook. But the, the hot leads are also in the CRM. Mm -hmm. I've got to focus on these 20 people that's going to sell or buy within one to three months. Um, that's a Mike Ferry rule. So yeah. my second year, I did get a coach, which was the Mike Ferry coach. Um, that, that one was really helpful too, because a coach is just, they get your mind straight. Were you, uh, were you really purposeful about your database? Like, were you putting them on eight by eight campaigns or were you just using it as a placeholder? I would put mostly all the leads on a drip. Wow. Yep. I don't know about the eight by eight, but it's, it's close to it. Yeah. Some sort of drip campaign. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So then year one wraps up you know, first six months, zero transactions, the last six months of your first year cranked out about 18 transaction, took you to 13 million production. Year two, 2019, the new year hits. What was your goal for 2019, knowing the momentum you're coming off of in the last six months? What did you set for yourself and how did you do? Or, my, or you could be completely authentic. If you didn't have a goal, that's totally cool too. We just I want do. to know. Okay. And All Mark right. Rico was, uh, he gave me a check too. You know, I was like, Mark, my first year was, my first year was 50 million in, in my goals. Right. But I only landed at what, 13 mil. Right. So I was telling Mark Rico about it. I want to do 50 mil by myself. How can I do this? And he just said, set your goal higher. You know, like you set your goal at 50 and you got to 13. So set your goal at 100 mil. You know, like, why not? I was like, oh, shit, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, so my goal was like, I'm going to sell 100 homes, 700,000 to 1.3. You know, I'll land at a mil and I'm going to do 100 of these. Um, that was my goal. And I only landed at 30% of that. So <laughs> uh, it's always it's still pretty... Good book of business. Yeah. Okay. So you had the goal in 2019 where you're going to stay the course and still focus on internet. It sounds like right now it was at that time, internet leads and expired listings and open houses. Open, open houses. houses was still a part of it for you too. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I pick, I, you know, you, of course you pick up buyers from open houses, but there's times where you pick up sellers. Yep. Um, and at your open house, you have 10 people walk in you're bound to have one to two hot leads. You just got to find, you just got to like convert them. Yeah. And stay on top of them, you know, stay on top of them. Well, what's interesting there is you say, you've just got to convert them. It sounds so easy, but tell everyone, how many no's did you get over this short period of time before you got your first yes? Too many. Too a many. lot. There's times where like, you think they're a hot lead, and then they go renting or you think they're going to buy with you and they buy with another agent. Right. You know, which is the nature of the game. Mm -hmm. So the goal is a hundred million for 2019. We're still doing open houses, RDC, Zillow and expired. And then was it the beginning of 2019? Is that when you hired your first coach which was from the Mike Ferry? Yeah, that was my first hire. Very so I didn't beginning. Admin or anything like that. Okay. And you, you, did you have Joey at this time yet or no? Um, or is it still just you, 2019, January? No, no. So 2019, March is when we started the team. Because okay. I, I, went on a, I went on a church trip and it was an orphanage trip. So I had a bunch of buyers and sellers. So I'm like, hey, uh, during the time it was, it was like Evan, Justin, Andrew. So I was like, I was just talking, I was talking to Justin and Andrew a lot. I was like, hey, can you guys help me with the showing? Can you help me with this uh, seller? Um, so they would just go on the appointments um, and just help me out. I was like, wow, you know, I was really, I was like, you know, thank you guys. Thank you guys. And then I was thinking, 
why don't we just collaborate together? I have so many leads that I can't take care of anyways. I can give you guys the leads. We got, you know, we'll learn how to convert these faster. Um, we'll hold each other accountable. We'll do role play. We'll do all of this. Wow. I was like, shit, they, they ran with it. They're like, yeah, let's join the Wayne group. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> so, so in the first quarter, you had five people. You didn't just start with one. You kind of just said, let's all just get on this, get in, get in the, get in the bus and let's go. go. We'll just figure it out. As long as you guys are willing to be vulnerable and roll with the punches, we'll just figure this out as we go. Yeah. And I, I was like, wow, thank God it worked out. Everybody, yeah. everybody on the team um, managed to do 10 each and I got to be a part of five of them for each one, you know? Wow. Yeah. So like, cool. Cool. <laughs> you know? So those are five because you're saying half. So 50, 50. So that's if they did 10. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying they did 10 deals, which is you get five, you get credit for five of those deals. So you yeah, like basically, four to five to be right. exact. So you just got five transactions just by adding leverage to the team that you wouldn't have had otherwise had you not brought on Joey, Andrew, and all the others. And my referrals too, because Joey closed a deal that was a, a past client. I was like, I, I can't. I was like, I was like, Covina. I was like, don't you live in Azusa, Joey? You know, that's right next door. So Joey handled it. Yep. And he closed that one out. I was like, I was like six hundred or something, seven hundred. And so uh, now we're in the middle of last year, 2019. Are you still heavy buyers or are you gaining some traction on listings at this point? No, all, all five of my sellers are actually referrals and I didn't, I didn't even prospect for them. Are you asking your friends and family for referrals or are you still not there yet? Honestly, no, no, I'm not. Um, you're, you're still working new business then yeah. for the most part, I mean. That's fair. Very cool. Okay. We need to work on that though. Thank yeah. you. And so now the team is prospering and I know you, you, you know, the guys are selling some homes uh, and their business is coming from internet as well. Everything. Um, are they doing expireds too? Or are you guys doing things as a group? Um, or are you just helping them stay accountable? Well, you know, how I see online leads, it's you got to pay for it, right? And you get these leads. Um, it's just buyers. It, it's a good piece of business to have, but don't focus on it, right? Because at the end of the day, with or without the team, you got to think for yourself, what's going to make me more money? Is it my skills or is it, you know, just me keep on buying business, right? And of course, it's your skills. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm having a lot of the team members focus on their sphere or let's do role play, you know, give me a call. Let's do role play. Let's get that one appointment a day. The market is hot still. How do you like running a team now? It's cool. It's cool. It's like my little, little family, mm -hmm. sort of thing, you know, and I just want to give them value and I just want to, I just want them to, to hit their, hit their goals, whether it's six figures, whether it's quitting their, their job, you know. So what of, are you doing to help them achieve their goals? So when this whole pandemic happened, um, I've been trying my best to have like a, like a weekly coaching call mm -hmm. um, to hold them accountable. Before we would meet at the office once a week, but with the whole COVID, it's been hard for us to meet. Mm -hmm. um, and I just keep it simple, right? Just keep it simple. Just talk to your 20 new leads a day. Um, and if you don't like to talk to the 20 new leads, at least network with your, your sphere. Yeah. What has coaching done for you? Coaching has been great. I only pay like 650 bucks a month. Um, this holds me accountable because every week I got to report back to my coach and say, he's like, share me the good stories. Did you get any new listings, new escrows? Were you happy with, with the production of the Wang team in 2019? We could do better. Um, so right now, I'm hiring an EA to kind of balance some things out. Yep. And as much as I want to motivate everyone, you know, the, the motivation comes within, and I just got to dig out that motivation. What was the goal for this year pre-COVID? And uh, what was your goal before 
this ap uh, epidemic for 2020? So how I structure my team is everyone has their own goals, right? And everybody's goal is to sell, what is it? Everyone wants to sell about 20 homes. That's mm -hmm. about like, let's say 20 million. Um, and my own goal was to sell 250 million. Cause I figure, all right, I got to focus on two to $3 million homes, land in the middle, yep. a hundred of those. It's always a hundred. I don't know why I'm just a hundred. I'm, I'm going to get it one day, Scotty. The math one is easy on a hundred. That's <laughs> one day. All right. We're going to get there. Um, and with all the team members, uh, we're looking at what? Like 390 million. And if yeah. everyone hits their 20 mil. So how are you motivating yourself during this time? I mean, I know the market, I hope it's picked up for you in the last couple of weeks, but you know, for April and May, it was, well, it was very quiet. So how do you still keep that um, message running through your mind? Like there's still opportunity. Did you ever fall into a rut over the last 90 days or have you still been, or have you still performing at a high level um, during this pandemic? So the first month that this pandemic hit, I was, I was just in shock. I'm like, what do I do now? I just started this business. Like, why is this happening? <laughs> I can't go show home. I can't meet people. People doesn't want to meet me. Um, all of that, right? So I'm like, I was like, I just got started. Come on now. I just got started. <laughs> all right, why is this happening? Um, and I just shifted my mindset again, you know, just thinking about my goals. Like, like Jordan, what is your goal this year? 250 million. 250 million i'll make 5 million i'll make 5 million mm -hmm. it sounds ridiculous even when i say it but just believe in yourself yeah. what would you uh what would you suggest to anyone out there maybe who's not feeling that they're getting their fair share of the market man i, I always look at joey because you know joey was a bartender and you know working working a job and doing real estate. And long story short, right? He, he's, he's on track to do 20 homes this year, 20 sold homes this year. So just staying the course, keeping your mind focused and just keeping, keeping your goals. Just always envision yourself hitting your goals, whatever it is, right? Like going on a Hawaii trip with your family and like, or having that, that $1 million um, in your bank account or having that $500,000 in your bank account. Um, just envision that, just envision that and envision you building homes, envision you living in a $2 million house. Let's see, I'll read a couple comments while we see if anyone wants to jump in. You're on, so, uh, Steph said, uh, you're so on point with everything. Thank you so much for sharing and opening up. Patience is key. Yeah, that was a big aha. Uh, Ian said, example on your daily routine, please. Are you flexible or are you strict with your delegated time? Uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty delegated. I can show you my calendar. It's really simple, my calendar. Um, but yeah, it's just nine to 12, call your 20 people. You know, simple. And yeah, call your 20 people and do your follow-up 9 to 12 and then 12 to 1 go have lunch recharge the brain and 1 p.m to 6 p.m you should be at appointments and if you're not at appointments um go back to lead gen and if you don't want to go back into the office i i, I was going to start door knocking expires again but since the whole covid thing i don't know if i can go knock on people's door right now but we can just mindset it's mindset <laughs> You scared? No guts, no glory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Just nine to 12. Just nine do to your 12. contacts and follow up. And even from six to nine, you can do your follow ups. Um, besides practicing your scripts, how do you master your craft to list million dollar homes? It's all the same. Whether it's 500,000 or 5 mil, it's all the same. <laughs> so you're not necessarily, you're, you're, Cause you're in Newport, you're in, uh, you're, you're all over Chino. So are those just expireds that are in your wheelhouse that you've been nurturing for some time or what's taking you all over the map? 
Um, I used to live in Diamond Bar, so that was my bread and butter, Diamond Bar, Diamond Bar. And I recently moved down to Irvine. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to find my farm, right? And a lot of my business is still in Diamond Bar. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad drive, it's only like 20, 30 minute drive. But I'm trying to move my business into Irvine and Newport area. I had a question just in terms of like, I know you you were saying like use Mike Ferry and like the scripts that he uses. Um, how often when you, when you first started, right? How often were you allocating, how much time were you allocating daily to practice those scripts? Every other morning. Every other morning I would do role play with, you know, whether it's my, my assistant, even my wife, I did, you know, we did role play. I'm like, pretend you're a seller and you're mad at me and just, just talk to me rudely. Right. And, um, you know, we did role play like that too. And it's always good to do role play. Right. So that way, you know, what questions to answer right after the next, after the next, after the next. Cause when you're in the, when you're in the battlefield, when the questions hit you, you don't know how to answer them because it's new to you. But once you get the role play down, you're knowing like, all right, this is a question I got to respond to. This is how I should respond it to. This is what I got to say. This is what I shouldn't say. Um, you know, just a lot of times like that, what to say, what not to say. Yeah, that's good. And, and the second question um, was uh, if, if you could choose what script was probably like the most valuable one that you could use, would you say like it was expired or what other script that you felt like was like a game changer when you'd like learned that one? LP Mama is good um, for buyers. You know, LP Mama is a buyer thing. That was from Scotty, actually. Scotty shared that script with us. Um, and Mike Ferry expired. Mike Ferry expired. Just tweak it. You know, just tweak it into your own way. Mm -hmm. um, and come from a place of a game changer for me, Matt. I'll share this because uh, I know we all have MFO, the Mike Ferry. Come from a place of hope. That was a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. Come from a place of hope. Let the clients know you can get the job done. Whether you sold 10 homes last year, 20 homes last year, it doesn't matter. They just want to know you can get the job done. Um, or five homes, sorry. <laughs> five homes, 20 homes, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, just know that. Just let them know you can get the job done and come from a place of hope. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll do role play, Matt. <laughs> hey, um, Jordan, how are you sifting through all the... Uh all the numbers i mean there's a lot of numbers a lot of expireds and you seem to have a lot better luck or not luck but um you're 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 talking to those 20 people every single day but i mean there's just a, a, a the amount of numbers that are out there that have to be dialed is just a lot yeah yeah for sure don't get overwhelmed how are you sifting through them how are you making them uh, uh better i'm 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 not i'm just taking it one day at a time one number at a time um, if it's not a good number, then it's not a good number, right? But if it's the homeowner, like I, I hear the voicemail that's a homeowner or I got to talk with the homeowner, um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give them a call back. That would still be in my 20 new leads. You know, the follow-up is somebody that knows you and you're just shooting for the appointment to close them. Are you finding that a, probably like 60 or 70% of all the numbers that you're dialing are no good? For sure, for sure. That's just the nature of the game. That's just the nature of the game. Mm. Yeah. If you find a really good number source, let me know. I, I wanna <laughs> I wanna know. You know, because that's my question to all those veteran agents. Like, how do you get these good numbers? How do you get those good numbers, Scotty? <laughs> yeah, making three hundred dials a day and only talking to twenty. It's kinda hard. Yeah, that dialer thing. That's why I don't like the dialer. I, I, I call them three times in a row and th that ratio is, it's slow, but I talk to more people. You know, but just, you got to try out what works for you. All right. No one's got any final questions? Jordan. Thank appreciate you. it, man. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Love <laughs> the vulnerability, you. man. Thank you very much. And then um, before everyone jumps off, uh, or want to just plug next week where this is a new series success stories jordan thanks for kicking it off and next week i'm excited we're gonna have noel valdez jump on the call at one o'clock next week we'll do some marketing pushes uh, a push uh towards that too so you'll want to tune in so again jordan great success man continue it and uh let us know how we can help support your business keep it up